In this video, I'll show you how to control a DC pump with an Arduino. You can use these pumps for irrigation or hydroponics projects, or something like our levitating water fountain project. You can find links to these projects in the video description. Before we talk about controlling a pump, let's talk about purchasing one. There are many different types available, and we're not going to go over all of them in this video because what you'll need will vary depending on your application. However, you should always look at the technical details or specifications of the pump to see if it is appropriate for what you want to do. For example, you may be interested in the pump's flow rate. If you want to control it with the Arduino, you will also need to look at its electrical power requirements. The Arduino can provide 5 volts of power and several hundred milliamps of current. So if it is a pump that can run on 5 volts and only needs a few hundred milliamps, then you can power it directly from the Arduino. But, for example, if it is a pump that requires higher voltage, like this identical looking pump that has a different power rating for 12 volts, then you will need an external power supply. Note that this is also true even if the pump only requires 5 volts but has a higher current. If the current is up over an amp, the Arduino is not going to be able to supply that directly, so it's a good idea to have an external power supply, again, even if the pump is rated at 5 volts. So we'll go over how to connect an external power supply later in this video. Now we will switch over to Tinkercad, which is an online Arduino simulator that lets us see the circuit and the code side by side to talk about how to control the pump. You might say, wait a minute, that circuit doesn't have a pump, and you're correct. This is just a button and an LED, which should be familiar to you if you've watched some videos earlier in our Arduino tutorial series, which you can find linked in the description of this video. As you can see when I run the simulation, this is a very simple program that just turns the LED on when I hold the button down. If we take a quick look at the code, I declare variables for my two pins and one for the button state. In the setup function, I use the pin mode command to set the pin modes. I set the button pin as an input with the internal pull-up resistor enabled, so I do not need an external resistor attached to the button. And then in my loop, I use the digital read command to read the button pin and then an if else statement to turn the LED on or off depending on whether the button is pressed or released. What we'll see next is that we can actually keep this exact same code to control the pump, but we need to make some changes to the circuit. And to understand that, we need to talk about electrical current again. The Arduino's digital I.O. pins can only provide 20 milliamps each. That is enough to drive a small LED, but it is not enough to directly drive something that requires more current like a pump. Remember, the pumps we looked at earlier required several hundred milliamps of current. So to control the pump, we are going to introduce a new part called a transistor. You can think of transistors like electronic control valves that let you use something with low current, like the Arduino's I.O. pins, to control something that requires higher current, like a pump. There are many different types of transistors, and we are not going to get into all of them in this video. We are just going to use the one labeled NMOS in Tinkercad, this stands for N-Channel Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. I'm just going to call it a MOSFET for short. Again, for purposes of this video, don't worry about what all that means. The MOSFET has three pins. When the writing on the front is facing you, from left to right, they are the gate, drain, and source, conveniently labeled for us here in Tinkercad. So we are going to put that in the breadboard. First, I'm going to delete the LED and the resistor because we don't need those anymore. I'm going to rotate the MOSFET 90 degrees to make sure the three pins are in different rows. You do not want them all in the same row like this, or you would be shorting those pins together, which you should know if you know how a breadboard works. So again, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and put it in the breadboard like this. Next, I'm going to bring in a DC motor to represent the pump because Tinkercad does not have a separate pump part, but really controlling a regular DC motor is the same. It just has two terminals, one positive and one negative. And now we're going to wire up the motor and the MOSFET to the Arduino. So for the MOSFET, the gate, the leftmost pin when the writing is facing you and the MOSFET is upright, is the control pin. That's the one you're going to connect to your Arduino. So I'm going to use the same pin I was using earlier to control the LED. If I check my code, that is pin 9. I'm going to wire pin 9 to the same row on the breadboard as the gate. The source pin I'm going to connect to ground. I'm going to use a black wire since that's my usual color code convention for ground. 
And then for the motor, I'm assuming in this case it's a 5 volt motor, which I can power directly from my Arduino. I am going to wire the motor's positive terminal directly to the 5 volt bus. So the 5 volt power supply from the Arduino can provide more than the 20 milliamps that the digital I.O. pins can provide. So again, you can't get more than an amp out of it, but if your pump only needs a few hundred milliamps, you can run it directly from the Arduino. And then here, I am going to run the motor's ground or negative terminal through the MOSFET's drain or the middle pin. So what this means is that when current flows through the motor, when this MOSFET turns on, current will flow from the Arduino's 5 volt supply through the motor into the positive terminal, out through the negative terminal, through the MOSFET, and then to ground. That does not require drawing a lot of current from this control pin. This pin is just connected to the gate, which tells the MOSFET to turn on and off, but doesn't actually draw any current. Again, this is an advanced topic. Don't worry if you don't understand exactly how a transistor works. Just know that the point is that I can use my Arduino's I.O. pins, which are low current, to control a higher current load like a motor or a pump that is getting its power from somewhere else, in this case, the Arduino's 5 volt supply. And you can see that without making any changes to my code, remember I did not change the code at all, I can still start the simulation, hold down the button, and in this case, the motor will spin because I've replaced the LED with my motor. When I release the button, the motor will stop. That is all great if you can power the pump directly from your Arduino, but what if you have a pump that requires an external power supply? Remember, one of the pumps we looked at earlier requires 12 volts, which the Arduino cannot supply. And for example here, let's just say that this motor actually has a minimum voltage of 6 volts, which we can't get from the Arduino. So we would need something like an external battery pack with four AA batteries in it. These are 1.5 volts each, so when you combine them, you get 6 volts out. How would we connect that so we can power the motor? So I'm going to delete the motor's positive wire connection to Arduino 5 volts, and I would want to get my positive voltage to the motor from the battery pack's positive wire, and again, I'm going to make that red. And then here's the important part. You need to make sure that your battery pack has a common ground with the rest of the circuit. So you want to connect your battery pack's negative wire to the Arduino's ground. So I'm doing that by connecting both the Arduino ground and the battery pack ground to the same bus on the breadboard here. But what's very important is not to connect the Arduino's five volts to the voltage from your battery. So I am keeping my two positive lines separate. The mistake you can make if you are used to working with a breadboard is say normally you would connect the power and ground buses on both sides of the breadboard if you're building a more complicated circuit with more stuff so you need access to power everywhere. So now I have ground on both sides, which is fine, but I also have five volts on both of the power buses. So if I then went and connected my battery's positive wire directly to the power bus and also had the ground wire going directly to the ground bus, now I have a short circuit between six volts from the battery and five volts from the Arduino, and that is bad. It can damage your Arduino and parts on your breadboard. So another way to do this, for example, would be to delete or remove this jumper wire that is connecting the two power buses. And now these are isolated. You just have to remember they're at two different voltages. This one is at five volts, and this one is at six volts. So I can reconnect the positive terminal of my motor, making sure I'm correct, connecting it to the correct bus. And if I run my simulation, we can see that I get the same thing. The motor spins when I hold the button down, but now it is drawing its power from this external battery pack and not from the Arduino. So again, if you have a motor or pump with a higher current requirement than the Arduino can provide, this is how you connect your external power supply. The last thing I will cover here is how to control the pump's speed. So maybe instead of having the pump only fully on or fully off, you would like to run it at a variable speed. And you can do that using the analog write command. And if you'd like to control it with a knob, for example, you can use a potentiometer. So here I have a potentiometer wired to five volts and ground with the middle pin connected to one of the Arduino's analog inputs. And then in my code, I actually don't need to do anything in the setup function. And in the loop, 
I use analog read to read the potentiometer value. I then use the Arduino map function to convert the analog read value, which has a 10 bit range of 0 to 1023 down to an 8 bit range of 0 to 255, which is used by the analog write command. And I write that analog value to the pin I have selected for the pump, which needs to be one of the PWM pins, which stands for pulse width modulation. That's a topic for a different video. So make sure you pick a pin with one of the little squiggly lines next to it. If you want to do speed control again, in this case, I have chosen pin nine. So now if I run the simulation, you can see the motor is at zero RPM here. But as I gradually turn this dial, the motor speed will increase until it reaches a maximum. So I can now use this to run the pump at a variable speed. Hopefully you are now equipped to use a pump in your next Arduino project. For more fun Arduino projects and tutorials, check out our YouTube channel. And for over a thousand other projects in all other areas of science and engineering, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.